Remember, walk without rhythm and we won't attract the worm. We call a thousand lawyers buried up to their neck in sand. The sun snakes are with me. He told me he smuggled Jamie Lannister into doors. These are all archetypal, allegorical, sim deeply symbolic messages, deeply symbolic stories being told over time. So this is not about simply being is something being good or evil. It's about having the knowledge of the human physiology, the knowledge of the spiritual technology, and the knowledge of nature, and the wisdom and the, of the patterns of nature and the functions of life in order to either do good with that 
or to use that in order to hide that away, to stash that away, to hide it, to keep it for yourself in order to do evil over other beings, to hold that knowledge and to either do good or evil with it. That's simply all it is right there. Snake in ancient mythology, symbology, and theology is associated or recognized with the female goddess. aspect as well. And the snake is a symbol of both the male penis, the male phallic energy, as well as the female energy. And this is the archetypal serpent goddess. This is why we always find the archetypal dragon queen or the drag queen, which is exactly why the drag queens of Hollywood and its magical druidic order all always show you the dragon queen, the mother of dragons. The serpent goddess represents the kundalini energy. The kundalini energy comes from the etymology of Kunda, which comes from Kunta, Kunt. The etymology of meaning goddess, queen. The only word representing the entire female genitalia, and not just one specific aspect of it. So can you guys believe this, that I've been trying to get this segment of the video and this full film monetized on my channel, and I've had to come back and re-edit and censor this clip countless times at least maybe 12 uh, or several or, or roughly around a dozen times and that's why you'll notice uh, words and segments are blurred out throughout this entire video segment and so here's the latest one is that they were flagging this for uh, they restricting monetization on it so that I can't earn an income on this educational content because of they cl they claimed it's extreme profanity used in the video such as the word that I'm describing the etymology of the 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 kuntan the the etymology of this word that I'm explaining which is not profane whatsoever profanity profane is literally the opposite of sacred. And so I'm, te I'm teaching the sacred origins of the actual educational etymology of where this word comes from, the symbolism, and what it originally meant. And this is not profane whatsoever. It's not a hateful derogatory slur as described here by this human review on this video. You think they'd be, they, they wouldn't be dumb enough to think that this video is something hateful or 
just just hateful profane are you kidding me youtube reviewers what is wrong with you what is wrong with you this nothing in this video is hateful or a sl hateful slur it's educational factual etymology it's sacred so kundalini comes from as well as lini line ling linga which all refers to the the phallic line the phallic the pillar the linga the line the linguini the lingerie which are the thin strings the thin line the straight line the phallic line the linga which is the linguistics the tongue how the tongue relates is directly linked to the lingam, which is the p which I will cover further on as we get deeper into the anatomy of as above, so below the belt, uh, relating to how what is above the belt is directly a representation and a reflection of what is below the belt as far as glands and organs are concerned and physiology. So comes from female genitalia, Old Norse Kunta, Old Frisian, Middle Dutch, and Middle Low German Kunta, from Proto-Germanic Kuntun, a link to Latin Cuneus, meaning wedge, as in cuneiform, which was a language using specific wedge shapes to create the alphabet. As it's no mystery that the, the female China is known as the wedge. It's the female delta. It is the downward facing pyramid, the female delta. Tr tradition said the triangle was the primordial image of the female triangle of life. It was known as the Kali Yantra, representing Kali as Kunti, or as the Yoni Yantra, or the sign of the Vul In Egypt, the triangle was a hieroglyphic sign for a woman, and it carried the same meaning among the gypsies, who brought it from their original home in Hindustan. In the Greek sacred alphabet, the delta, or the triangle, stood for the holy door, the Vul of the all-mother Demeter. Most ancient symbol systems recognized the triangle as a sign of the goddess's virgin mother crone, Trinity, and at the same time as her genital holy place, the source of all life. The triangle represented the virgin moon goddess, Men, called Men Nefer, the archaic deity of the first mother city of Memphis, of Egypt. The triangle everywhere connected with the female trinity and a frequent component of monograms of the goddesses. To the Gnostics, the triangle signified creative intellect. The Sinai Peninsula, which is known as the Fertile Crescent. The female's fertile crescent. Cuneus, meaning wedge. From Proto-Indo-European root gu, meaning hollow place, as in hollow hole, or vagina. From Proto-Indo-European gwen, which is the root of the word queen, related to Greek gyna, meaning woman, hence gynecology. The study of the woman, of female anatomy. And you are Gina? Gina! Hey, what's up? Nothing. Look, I'm going to be real honest with you. Um, it's been a long time since I've been with a man. Spent a lot of time with uh, the ladies. Looking to get back up on that pogo stick. You know what I'm saying? So when we look up the etymology of the word Gina, or Gina, the name Gina, it brings us to yawn, the open wide mouth, the yawn, the, her gape. From Jin, Old Norse Gina, to yawn. Proto-Indo-European, guy, or gay, to yawn, gape, to gape, the yawn, to gape, be ajar. So this is why we're talking about her yawning, her yoni, the yoni, the yawn, the open mouth, the gape, her gina, 